Surprise! Google has some unexpected news to share today and it's been long in the making. The company just announced that not only is the Pixel 6 coming this fall, but it will also feature the first ever system on chip designed by Google. The chip is called Tensor, named after the company's open source platform for machine learning and that should tell you just how big a role AI plays in this processor. Now, we've heard rumors about Google's efforts to make its own mobile processor for a while under the purported codename project Whitechapel. While the company doesn't discuss code names, head of hardware Rick Osterlo did tell me that they've been at this for about five years. Though Google isn't ready to share the full details about Tensor just yet, Osterlo did explain that the SoC is an ARM chip designed around a TPU, or Tensor Processing Unit. The mobile chip was co-designed with Google's AI researchers, and the TPU is based on their larger versions in the company's data centers. It's not just designed to make machine learning tasks run better on your phone, either. Osterlo said they've also redesigned the Image Signal Processor, or ISP, allowing them to do special processing of images. Specifically, he said, there are a few points in the ISP where we can actually insert image processing, which is new. So what can Tensor enable that other mobile processors couldn't? Google's saving some of that information for the Pixel 6's launch in the fall, but the company did offer two examples of areas that would see dramatic improvement, photography and voice recognition and processing. At a demo in New York, Osterlo showed off some of these on the new Pixel 6s, which unfortunately I wasn't able to take photos or videos of. I can tell you that there will be two lines, Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. They looked basically like the leaked renders we've seen, except shinier since, you know, in person they're three-dimensional and light reflected off of what looked like glass frames. The new phones feature a distinctive new look and bright color options. Both the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro come in three colors, at least based on what I saw. I love the peachy pastel version, although there's also one that's mostly black for those who prefer something less flashy. They also have a horizontal camera bump that spans the width of the rear, and this will ensure the phone itself doesn't wobble from side to side when you lay the phone on a table. Yes, there's still a slope because of the bump, but it's not uneven like on, say, Galaxy or iPhones. More importantly, Google's upgraded the cameras themselves. It's not sharing specific megapixel or sensor size information just yet, but did say that these will be sharper and larger sensors than before. Osterlo said the Pixel 6's main camera will let in about 150% more light than previous pixels. There's also an additional ultra-wide lens for both Pixel 6 models, and the Pro gets an extra telephoto option as well that offers four times optical zoom. So there are actual camera hardware improvements, but the Pixel 6's promise better photography overall thanks to Tensor. With it, Google can do things like concurrently capture images from two sensors at different exposures while also running various machine learning models to figure out things like whether there's a phase and is the device moving or shaking. Then the Pixel 6 will combine all that information to process photos and improve or prevent blurry shots of hyperactive subjects. Tensor will also let Google perform computationally intensive tasks while you're shooting video. Osterlo said that in the past, a company hasn't been able to apply a lot of machine learning to video since it would be too taxing for a phone processor. But that all changes with Tensor, he said. One thing they've been able to do is run an HDR net model on videos, which drastically improves quality in tricky situations like shooting a scene where the camera is pointing at the sun. While Google's demos did look effective, I unfortunately can't show you the results or talk about them without skepticism. These are, after all, controlled demos by Google. I can only really gauge how impressive and useful these features will be when we do get review units to test out in the real world. I did get to see a more telling preview, though. In Gboard on the Pixel 6, you'll be able to hit the microphone button in the Compose field, narrate your message, and then say hot words like send or clear to trigger those actions. 
You can also edit typos via the on-screen keyboard while the mic is still listening for your dictation. I was impressed that the system was smart enough to understand tone and delivery to distinguish between when you're saying send in a sentence like I will send the kids to school versus when you're using it to trigger an action and saying send. Finally, there are a couple more things that Australo showed me. Live caption with translate as well as material UI on Android 12. Thanks to Tensor, Android's live caption feature, which provides subtitles for anything playing through your device's sound system, will be able to concurrently translate what's being said as well. This all happens on device. So the next time you're watching a foreign language TED talk or your favorite international TV show, and it doesn't have subtitles, it won't matter. Tensor will provide. As for material UI, the color changing interface, which Google unveiled at IO this year, it's still not in the Android 12 public beta, but it was on the Pixel 6s at the demo. We've seen a lot about this. So the one thing I learned that we haven't already heard about is that if you're like me and you prefer your icons to keep their original colors, you can opt to leave them untouched. We've gotten a really good look at what's coming in the fall, though Google is still keeping plenty of details under wraps. We still don't know if it plans to share if it had help from other manufacturers in coming up with this chip, though it did emphasize that this is a Google-designed SoC. Details about CPU and GPU cores, clock speeds, and other components will be shared later this year. I guess after all the waiting we've done to get official info about Tensor, we still have a little bit more waiting to do. For now, at least we know Google's own SoC is real. It's coming in the Pixel 6 and it will be focused on AI. Hopefully that'll tide you over until the launch this fall, or at least until the next leak. In the meantime, you can get more updates on Google Tensor, Apple Silicon, Pixel phones, iPhones, Galaxy phones, and more by subscribing to Engadget. So stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching.